So, uh, I got another one of these, uh, packs of, um, historic document replicas, and when I was in the, uh, Brand Museum in London, I actually, uh, bought some loose items, too, and I think that this, uh, wartime cookery book, uh, would go with this set right here, which is called Children's War, and, um, the idea behind this set is, uh, items that are associated with the evacuation of uh, school children from London to the countryside in England. So, you may have already seen my album of documents and replicas. So, I'm going to start a new section here for Children's War, and I'm also going to include this wartime cookery. So, I'm going to start first by going through the wartime cookery book. And uh, this was a book handed out in 1940, issued in the National Food Campaign Exhibition. And um, I got it for two pounds, 95 penny. And uh, what the idea behind this book is, is that you would uh, make recipes on in within a rationing system when a lot of ingredients were rationed so that frontline troops could have essential things like beef, potatoes, and so forth. So, uh, and also fuel to drive the vehicles and so forth. So, um, here's some tips to save you to save fuel and food value. Keep a vegetable stock pot with the water from celery, leeks, onions, carrots, potatoes, greens, and other vegetables. Never throw these liquids down the sink. They contain valuable minerals and vitamins and partly help to make up deficiency in ration foods. So it's advising you to keep the water that you boiled your vegetables in. Use the liquid from the boiled vegetables to dilute tin soups. So they, you buy a can of soup. In the States, we call them a can. In England, they call them a tin. You know, pour it in there, if, especially if it's a concentrated soup. Um, when serving soup and vegetables at the same meal, cook the vegetables in the soup. Uh, steam root vegetables. Yeah, that's another thing. Uh, there's a there's a show, a British show called 1940s House, where they show that um, they had a ration of water, so they would actually draw a line in the bathtub on how much water you could fill into the bathtub to take a bath. So they're saying if you're gonna cook vegetables, make sure that you um, cook it with the soup. So uh, cook potatoes in their jackets, so don't peel them. Uh, steam root vegetables. Save all fat from cooking meat, refine it, and use it for other cooking purposes. So that just means strain it through a coffee filter. And then you've got uh, bacon grease or, or steak grease or whatever. And actually, there, some people still to this day love um, spreading that on their dish. You know, they like to spread bacon grease on a steak or whatever. Uh, it's not uncommon. Um, and cook meals as far as possible with one unit of heat. In one large steamer on a low fire or single gas ring you may cook. A meat roll, steamed jacket potatoes, boiled or steamed suet pudding, or in one oven you may cook baked meat casserole or mixed vegetables, fruit pie or pastry or scones. So um, all of this, the idea is to go farther with less and save fuel, save water and so forth. And then we have our recipes. Um, minced beef roll, curried mutton, Spiced beef, uh, meat, and macaroni pie, beef and sausage roll, and to tell you the truth, these still sound appetizing to me. Tripe and liver hot pot, sausage and tomato pie, curried beef, savory roll, carbonate of beef, um, meat substitutes, vegetables and soups, beans and cheese, vegetable marrow and tomato, potato shortbread, potato cheese. Potato suet paste, potato pie, potato macaroni pudding, onion and cheese pudding. So, potatoes obviously was something you could get your hands on. So there, and I, I think I said in the beginning that was, I, I, I yeah, I'm not exactly sure everything that was rationed, but I do know that beef was rationed. Um, and uh, I'm not. It, it would be interesting to maybe we'll learn as this video progresses what they had to work with, but it looks like they had you know. Cabbage, potatoes, uh, oatmeal sausage, pea soup, onion and potato soup, cabbage and rice, vegetable pie with mashed potatoes, butter bean soup, 
um, tomato soup, puddings and sweet dishes, mixed fruit pudding, date and apple pastry, syrup tart, date and walnut loaf, apple pancakes, fig charlotte and pineapple salad, and then the section for notes. So, um, just a handy little thing to have around if you were in a wartime situation. And here we have a ration book in this, so maybe we'll get a little bit more info as the video goes on. So, I'm going to remove staples here and remove the items from this pack. Now, I did buy all of these packs that I am showing you in the... Um, the Brandy Museum in London, which if you go to London, I, I highly recommend it. Um, it is full of stuff like this. You see it, and then you can you can walk out with replicas to take home, which is really cool. They always have a little set of trading cards in each one of these packs, which I really like. So when I start, I always uh, set aside um, a trading card sheet or a business card sheet so I can have these where I can see them all. So first is um, Leeds Central Children's Homes present Aladdin in Liggett Park Methodist Hall, Saturday the 3rd of February 1940. So um, it's something for the kids, uh, wartime entertainment. Um, and this is just, uh, let's see if there's any commentary about this. Um, paper, various paperwork related to house inspections and anti-gas helmets for babies. Um, it doesn't really say, I, I'm just assuming that this is just a, something that they might have even handed the kid if he, was, if he or she was scared. that says, hey, later on you can watch Aladdin and, and cheer up. Um, these are um, miscellaneous image, evocative collection of wartime images. Um, evacuation. I'm not sure if this was uh, what the purpose of this card was. This is um, new clothes from old make do and mend economy design. I, um, I, it's possible that this was just sort of a handout that was advising people to uh, salvage old clothes. Here's just a photograph of children wearing gas masks, which I guess you could call evocative. Um, a game for the blackout crosslets, a competitive crossword game, and this is just a, an image of like something to play if you're biding time waiting. Uh, during a blackout, you had to turn all the lights out, cover your windows and so forth, very limited light. So maybe in that limited light, you'd have something to occupy your time so you wouldn't think about what was happening. Um, Sovereign's Crowning Achievement, Park Lane Assortment, uh... And that's another, I'm guessing a card game or something. I'm not sure. Here's another image, a vacuum image that's very much like this one. Uh, looks like the same artist. It says Fanny Fuzzy. So maybe, maybe it was like a little vacuum trading cards. Evacuation area and reception area. I think these were trade. I think these were trading cards of some kind, or a card game like air raid alarm, you know. And yeah, that must be what this is. Pieces from some kind of card game that was made up. Dinky toys. Oh, look! At those are actually kind of cool looking. Little trucks and planes and military vehicles and cars. Now that's pretty cool. Um, Free, another Rhode Island offer, a new book for children all about the adventures of Little Boy Blue. Also free, The Raiders, another Rhode Island book which has proved very popular. The Raiders is a thrilling story for youngsters. 
So we'll add for books. This is The Schools in Wartime. And we see little children in class with bombed out buildings behind them. Um, another uh, scene of evacuated children. Does this is remind you a little bit of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? When all the children were being evacuated in the beginning. Um, here's the warmest toast, uh, tiny underwear. <laughs> uh, War Illustrated, uh, looks like a magazine cover for, uh, and look, uh, Piccadilly service in the metro, in the underground. I've been there in that, in that very station. War Thriller, another magazine cover. War Illustrated, War Thriller. And here is Children's Lo Children Love It, Galloway's Cough Syrup. <laughs> Keep your kids from coughing during the blackout. And Nipper Annual 1940 Daily Mail. So these are just interesting images associated with the blackout conditions. And I put them in my business card sleeve. I know that might be a little too big, so that's gonna have to go in um, one of the bigger packs. Um, next is what well, I was talking about the ration book, um, Ministry of Food, a uh, junior ration book, um, surname Edgecombe, uh, other names. K.I. He has an address here. Date of birth, 20, 22nd of June, 1929. Food office code. If found, return to any food office. And there's stamps on the back. And now we're going to see items that were rationed. So, here's the, the person. Um, K.J. Edgecombe. From Boscombe, um, Malmesbury and Parsons Dairies, Boscombe East, and we see milk, uh, names and addresses of retailers, again, so he rationed it and then he got stamped when he purchased it, meat, eggs, um, now it looks like J.R. Edgecombe, That's the name, surname and initials. Uh, eggs, fats, um, bacon, cheese, sugar, meat, eggs, fats, cheese, bacon, sugar. So these are the items that were rationed. And you see all the stamps. And the date, so NNT. Huh, interesting. It would be really cool to see a tutorial on how this worked. Um, puddings and sweets. This is a um, war cookery leaflet minute by the Ministry of Food, very much like this one. And it is. Um, Children should be encouraged to eat their first course of meat, fish, or cheese, etc., potatoes and vegetables, or salad before they're allowed the sweet course. Puddings and sweets are only tidbits for filling up odd corners and must not be regarded as the main part of the meal. Puddings may be rather a problem these days because fat and sugar are rationed and not much of either is left after we have buttered our bread and sugared our tea. However, with care, you 
will probably be able to spare sufficient of these ingredients to make some of the wartime recipes given in this leaflet. Various flavorings can be added to the basic recipes to produce a number of different puddings. All recipes are enough for four people. So steamed and boiled puddings. Basic pudding using mashed potato. Basic pudding using raw grated potato to replace half the fat. Suitable flavorings for use with basic recipes. Syrup and ginger. Uh, prune sponge. Jack Horner pudding. Baked puddings. Chocolate pinwheels. Too sweet filling for tarts and date filling. So, and then we have some more milk pudding, American bread pudding, cold puddings, chocolate oatmeal pudding, and apple, apple full. Interesting, I've never heard of. Very interesting. I did get uh, a pack of uh, legal sized. Paper, paper packers. So we can start filling one up now. And we'll put this in here. And it'll flatten out nicely. And we'll put in this ration book. So we have two things in here so far. We've looked at these two things. This is the this is one cool thing. This is the tag like you saw in Narnia or other movies. This is the London Cat. London County Council School Number 253. This is um, the evacuation tag that you would actually put onto the child um, and to keep track of them. Um, that's really probably the, the, the most sought after item in this pack is the, the child's tag. Um, here is... Brown Tree's Kit Kat. <laughs> it's a Kit Kat wrapper. Four big chocolate wafers. Um, and it would have probably been a foil pack inside of this uh, sticky wrapper that would wrap around it like so. Okay, I hate that truck. Every time I make a video, that truck drives by. <laughs> okay, uh, anyway. Um, so it's interesting at controlled price. That's very cool. So that's it. Basically, the 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 paper strip around a foil pack of Kit Kats. This is a copy of the mat of a magazine. So and it seems to be a whole magazine on here. Now, I'm guessing this was probably bigger. Um, this is very small, but it seems to be very thick and seems to have all the pages, so I'm excited to look through this real quick. It's got Boy's Own Paper, December 1944. Good night, children everywhere. Never still for a moment what energy they use. Now it's time for that long, refreshing sleep. A cup of hot oxo and off to bed. For over 60 years, uh, King of the Road, Lucas. Um, it's an ad for flashlights. Um, Pyruma for perfect modeling. Uh, plastic cement. So it's, it's like uh, modeling clay like I have, like I showed in my art supplies bag to make, you know, I guess you had a lot of time back then too if you wanted to make creations like that. Uh, the new Hudson trademark, the new Hudson bicycle. Um, the wizard, give your teeth shine with Gibbs dentrifice. It's a uh, toothpaste or tooth powder. And here's some articles. Um, 
about, you know, it's kind of like boys' life, so it's like fishing and things that boys would like. Letters from home. Um, letters from the front. So the kids would have a better understanding of what their fathers were doing. And the section about model railroading. The Mersham School Mystery. Oh, this is, looks like a um, brought by Coleman's Mustard and a little uh, mystery story to put in here to entertain kids. This reminds me very much of a magazine called Boy's Life. When I was a Cub Scout, I used to like to read. Um, something about Haunted Manor House. I like the color part of it. Stanley Matthews, English, England's Greatest Outside Right. Tend to your own. Uh, this is a way when you took your black and white photographs to tint them, add color to them. Uh, another model railroading ad. Licorice candy. Um... Flashlights, or just lights for modeling, privacy reading lights, hmm, books for Christmas, there's an ad for Webley Pistols, That's, it was a different time, what can I say, when I used to read Boys Life, there would be ads for, for firearms too, I don't know if they still do that or not. Um, this little magazine just is really cool this, that this is one of the attachments I mean there's, this is basically a whole magazine cover to cover Macintoshes victory stamps I have that one. Have quite a few of the victory stamps. Wow, model, scale model aircraft. That's some cool stuff in, in this set here. So let's go ahead and um, make a sleeve. Let's put the wartime cookery in here. Actually, uh, I'm going to put the Kit Kat wrapper. Kind of here. And four time cookery underneath. And I think I'm going to put maybe this tag. starts to look. Uh, the next thing is a entire children's newspaper edited by Arthur Me. It's a whole paper from February 15th, 1941. And um, I'm not, I'm wondering where this was distributed. If it was, if it came to all kids or if this was something that was uh, handed out at evacuation stations to give kids something to, to fool with while they were waiting. But it has probably articles written in a sort of a kid-friendly way about the war. Um, actually, some of the articles look per fairly mature. And then it has little special interest articles about history or hmm. it is a full straight up newspaper Needs more food. Mussolini's black shirts. Uh, Shropshire delight. 
Something to read before bedtime. Cook in Queen, Queen, Cook in Queen Elizabeth's Day. And on the back there's activities. The brand tub. Then there's... There's a crossword puzzle. Shows you five kinds of bridges. Suspension, cantilever, bascule, tubular, and swing. Um, how, how Captain Cook wrote his name. Huh. Very interesting. So it's basically what it's, it's what it is. It's a, a newspaper for children during uh, during the war. That's what's sticking it out. So I can. Get the crease out of it. Very cool. What's next? Uh, this is Extras Needed by Mother and Child in Wartime. Um, and how you can get them. Fruit, juice, cod liver oil, vitamin tablets. It's kind of like uh, postnatal care before baby's born. Yeah, prenatal care. You know, a pint of milk a day, eggs, dried egg, meat, fresh oranges, concentrated orange juice, and fish liver oil. After milk, eggs, cod liver oil to help grow strong. We don't even, these, these are sort of things that you don't hear about nowadays. You he, you don't hear especially about cod liver oil. Uh, when I was a little kid, castor oil was something that was kept in the house, usually as a punishment. I don't know if anyone here is old enough to remember what that was for. Um, concentrated oranges, that's still something that you find on Wick. Um, fresh oranges though. So like, like nowadays when they at least... When I was in the military and I w we had WIC, um, the, the things you got were, uh, you got cheese, eggs, milk, baby formula, um, orange juice, frozen concentrated orange juice, um, stuff I eat. So it, but the cod liver oil is interesting. Interesting. This is this special respirator for a small child is government property. Any person who has it in his possession is responsible in law for using care to keep it in good condition. It is to be returned to the local authority in whose area the possessor may be at any time, either on request or when no longer required. This is, um, <laughs> doesn't say, this looks like, uh, a, a Something that was attached to a respirator or um, or gas mask, probably what they would have called a respirator. What is this? This is um, visitor's record form. City of London, baby's anti-gas helmets. Uh, okay, I've been advised by the medical officer of health of the recent birth of your child. Arrangements have been made for a baby's anti-gas helmet to be available for you at the warden's post situated at this address. I'm enclosing a record card and be glad. To, uh, and this visitor's record form, John Warrens. Any comments? Uh, is there any reason for thinking that the home conditions are unsuitable for children? No. Others? No. So I guess is, is the householder willing to take charge of unaccompanied children? No. And then it comments flatly refuses to entertain the idea of having any children. Could obtain no reasonable explanation for refusal. So, so this is... Um, 
basically the paperwork uh, from households that are saying they don't want to take uh, evacuated children. Um, that's my guess. Um, this is Leave Hitler to Me, Sonny. You ought to be out of London. This is just something about um, to make kids feel better about evacuating. <laughs> this is uh, um, by the Ministry of Health. So, a, a gentle way of saying keep your kids, get, let your kids evacuate, uh, and keep them out of danger. This is evacuation, why and how, public information leaflet number three. Read this and keep it carefully, you may need it. Why evacuation? Um, there are still a number of people who ask, what is the need for all this business about evacuation? Surely, if war comes, it would be better for families to stick together and not go breaking up homes. It's quite e easy to understand this feeling because it is difficult for us in this country to realize what war is these days and what it w might mean. If we were involved in war, our big cities might be subjected to determined attacks from the air at any rate in the early stages. And although our defenses are strong and are rapidly growing stronger, some bombers would undoubtedly get through. So, so let's take a, a pause for a second and think about this. This is 29 years before I was born. I mean, this is not that long ago. Um, and what blows me away is we have people today acting like wearing a mask is, you know, unforgivable crossing into, uh, you know, people's rights and, and everything. I mean, things happen and then things get better. You know, that's just the way life is. And we may go a long time when things aren't happening, but can you imagine this? Can you imagine having to evacuate your... And I had to do a quick edit because, um, oh, right in the middle of filming this this uh, nice long video, I got a robocaller who decided to cut off my video and give me a pointless uh, spam call about, like, credit cards or student loans that I, you know, or something to that um, that has nothing to do with me that everybody gets. Really hate those, but I set my phone to do not disturb, and I'm going to continue. Um, here is a English composition from Stanley Lauder, written in 1938, and and it's about uh, Hitler's invasion of Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia. Um, written in a child's handwriting. And that's pretty poignant. And it, it's just one of those things that hit home that, you know, a lot of the people affected by World War II were children. And, you know. Add an ad here, and um, let's put so we have this, this, this. We have one more sleeve, and we have. And we have two more items to look at here. Uh, women wanted for evacuation service. And children are safer in the country. Leave them there. These are basically um, two kind of cards. Or almost like postcards. But uh, or of images of posters. Hello. Uh, how... 
How are you, my little evacuee? I hope you're happy by the sea. I love your letters. Please do send another loving kisses from your mother. And that's... These are just images to try to cheer people up. This was a dark time. It might be you caring for evacuees as a national service. This is... Um, all of this is to keep people on the same page that, you know, we all have a duty, a, a common duty during this time to take care of the children of our country. And this is just a photograph of evacuated children. You see the tags on them. You see their their bags, their luggage. Uh, these are scenes that uh, of a time period that was different and hopefully won't ever happen again. But in some places it's happening now, just depending on what's going on in the world it seems. But, uh, it's, these artifacts are interesting. This is a good way to teach history or to think about history. Okay, so that is Children's War. Filed away in my binder. Oops. Here's the thunder outside. I put the card right here. In this pocket and in my ever growing binder of documents, pictures, and so forth. And I want to go through all of this at some point in a later video. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one and uh, I'll be back again. So please uh, click the bell icon, uh, rate, comment, subscribe, um, and I, I try to answer comments uh, as much as I can. Right now I'm just getting videos up and then I do uh, do my best to come around and answer every comment. So thank you so much and I appreciate all of you. And I appreciate all of you stick with me and, and continue to enjoy the channel that I put out. So until next time, bye.